but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Wow. Go on. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Thank you. Now, look, look at Pastor for just a minute. Are you one of those faith people? I hope to God you are. Amen. Because if you have faith, supernatural things result from you releasing faith. Oh, look. yes, they do. Yes, they do. What did Jesus say? Now, that area right there, I, I choose to believe it's figurative. I don't think he meant us to go around moving actual physical mountains. But what he is saying is this. Now, you can. I know this is going to blow you away. I I did not, but the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit moved a tornado in front of me. And you think I'm kidding. I was living in Marshall, Texas, and they had a tornado. Sirens going off. Sky's black. Keep your places there. I want to tell you this stuff is real. And I walked out on the back porch. This is Marshall, Texas. And I could see, I mean, it was huge. It was only a block away. A huge black tornado. Oh, porches rambling. I mean, the, the windows are... That's how close it was. Sucking in and out, getting ready to blow out of my house. Coming right straight from my house. I said, in the name of Jesus, go! You'll not touch this property. And the thing jumped right over my house. Landed a block away, went two blocks down the street, hit the Baptist College, tore it all apart. Well, that was just a quint. I don't think so. Yeah. If you need to, you can move physical things in faith. Absolutely, Jesus did it all the time. What started this teaching right here is that he cursed a fig tree. And if you study it back, he walks up to a fig tree hoping there might be a fig on it, even though it wasn't the season for figs. Study it out, please. Now, if he's God, Jesus is God, don't you think Jesus knew it wasn't time for figs? Why would he go to a fig tree when it wasn't the season for figs and look for a fig on it? What's the, what's the teaching? What do we need to understand in that? You know, faith comes later. What is the what he comes up to a fig tree out of season? Paul taught later, be ready in season and out of season to give account of the hope that is in you. Be ready all the time. What is Jesus saying? I don't care what season it is in your life, I expect fruit out of you. I don't care if things are going good, I expect you to produce. I don't care if it's cold and dry, I expect you to produce. When I put a demand on you, I expect you to be able to produce for the kingdom. Amen. And what was his response when there was none? He said, fine, if you're not going to produce for me, you won't produce for anybody. And that's where I started this teaching. The times of grace are slipping out. We're either going to get right with God, get serious with God, or we'll get nothing from God. Amen. And you'll move on to somebody that will. You'll still be saved. You'll still go to heaven. He is still on you, but he's not going to waste any more time with people that don't want to do a thing for him. Amen. Time too short. Too many lives depend on your obedience. Oh, yeah. He's calling for fruit. Produce. Amen. Amen. Now, he said, if you're not going to produce for me, curse be you. Nobody will eat from you. They came back the next day, the thing had died from the roots up. Overnight. Boom. They said, Lord, look, the tree that you cursed, that's what led into this teaching. And truly, I tell you, if you have faith, not only will you do what I just did to this tree, but you'll be able to say to a mountain, be plucked up and cast into the sea. And if you don't doubt what you say is powerful, it will happen. Amen. 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 It's good. Well, you just don't know what kind of obstacles I'm facing. Have you opened your mouth against them? In faith or desperation? Well, I just have a mountain of opposition. Really? Well, did you read this? 
well, it ain't moving for me. Maybe you're not operating in faith. Maybe you're operating in desperation. Two different things. Maybe you're operating in the spirit of whining. Two different things. Can I hear an amen? Amen. You're looking at me like I'm the preacher from hell this morning. That means I, it must be right on target. Amen? A lot amen. of you still want to sit around like Buddhists, you know, and play with your belly button and expect God to do everything. Hallelujah. Now watch. We read all that. Now look at this next part. Therefore, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you desire, nothing wrong with your desires, not a thing going to happen until you use faith. Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. 25. And when. Say when. When. I'm never going to get through this teaching. I've got to hurry. And when. Now listen, not when you get around to it. Right while you're praying. Right while you're on your knees with God. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have any ought against anybody that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if, there's that if again, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive, your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. What does unforgiveness affect? We started with what? Unforgiveness affects your prayer life. Unforgiveness affects your faith. He said, now look, this is how faith works. But while you're praying that prayer of faith, if you've got any unforgiveness with between you and anybody, get it dealt with there. Don't even stop praying until you get it out of your heart. Amen. Amen. Unforgiveness stops faith. Because your heart's condemned. Amen. Amen. That's where Satan works. In your mind, to get into your heart, to condemn your heart. So you can't release faith. Because so Satan knows that the Word of God spoken in faith will move mountains and destroy his kingdom of darkness. So all he can do is get into your mind, condemn your heart, lock it up in unforgiveness, and then stop the flow of life. Yeah. That's better than you realize. God's as supernatural as he's ever been. And the Lord God, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He raised the dead 2,000 years ago, He'll raise the dead now. What's happening, church? We're stopping the life, the creative power of God, because we choose to walk in a world with unforgiven hearts, condemning ourselves daily in our own unforgiveness, in our hearts condemn us. And we're never bold enough to release the faith enough to get the kingdom manifested. Because our hearts condemn ourselves. Because we won't let go. Man, that's right. And it doesn't matter what age you are. You get sucked into this trap and bind you and condemn yourselves into bondage the rest of your life. And it stays until you operate the if. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 13. Read it real loud. 13 through 16, brother uh, Victor. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if you have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Stop right there. Read it again. Start from the beginning. James 5, 13. Amen. Is any among you afflicted? Anybody dealing with sickness? Let him pray. Number one, what do you need to do? Right. Come on, church, talk to me. Number right. one, what do you need to do? Pray. Right. Then number two, go on. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. What? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Stop. Are you suffering 
sicknesses and physical ailments. Well, I don't need to go to church to serve God. Fine, stay sick. You can't rebel against the word says, forsake not the assembling of yourself, as is the manner of some, particularly when you see that day approaching. When you really start sensing Jesus is close to coming is when you start need to stop missing church. That's exactly what he meant. Amen. It's even more critical to go to church, get built up, get equipped, get strengthened, get serious than ever before. So all these folks say, well, I can worship God on my front porch. Yeah, no, you can't. You can worship God on your front porch in addition to going to church. Amen. Amen. But if you think you can pick and choose what you're going to submit to and still be a worshiper, you're deceiving yourself. You're living in that if that's bringing chains on your life. What did he say? Pray. And if you need healing, go to the elders. Is that what it said? Am I, am I preaching too long? Is this getting boring? No. Is that what it said? Amen. Call on the elders of what? Your front porch? The church. Your bass boat? Your backyard. See, what happens is we want to pick and choose how we're going to serve God, where we're going to serve God, and what conditions we're going to serve God, and expect God to answer prayers based on our kingdom. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Call on the elders of the church and what? And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Go on. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Rod, you got a King James? Teresa, you got a what? New King James, I think? International. Rick, what's it say in the international? Um. And the prayer of faith shall what? Wow. How many sick Christians you know? Now folks, this is getting real real upfront and personal, isn't it? Because we don't we, we, it's just going boom, 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 boom. But why is God doing that? Because God's sick and tired of Christians accusing God. Amen. This Bible's true. God's alive. God works. And He's it, the, the reason we don't see people flooding the kingdom is because all they see is us blaming God. I prayed it didn't work. I went to church and didn't get a thing. I asked Him to heal me and nothing changed. Something's wrong with us, darling, not God. Amen. Amen. And the prayer of faith will deliver them from sickness. Go on. Let Teresa read the next part. And the Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Stop. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Sin, forgiveness, and healing are all tied together. Amen. I didn't say because you're, you're always sick because you're in sin. I didn't say that. But you can definitely be sick because you're sinning. It's like the Christian girl who comes up pregnant and can't figure out how it happened. You sin, darling. Now that, you're looking at me like that's offensive. That's just a fact. Remember we talked about the authority of the word. If a Christian jumps over that rail, he's going down. If a sinner jumps over that rail, he's going down because the law of gravity works constantly. Just whoever's tapping into it is affected by it. Amen. I don't care if you're a 16-year-old Christian girl, you crawl on the back seat and get pregnant. It's because of what? 